And this guy that's about to come on my stage, uh, once again, I've known uh, in high school, he was uh, my partner in <laughs> everything that we did together. We used to go to clubs together. We used to uh, do things that kids do in high school together. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, uh, we went everywhere together. Uh, and then uh, I graduated uh, Deer Park High School, and I went that way. And Paul graduated Deer Park High School and went that way. <laughs> and uh, I'll just share a little bit about what Paul does. His name is uh, Paul Becker. Uh, over the years, I've had lots of speakers on my stage, very few, I think two military veterans, not sure if I've had any actual war heroes, and certainly not any admirals. Well, today we have all three. Uh, he, Paul has served, he's followed, and he's led at sea, ashore, and in adversity. His presentation will inform, educate, and inspire. Paul just retired as a U.S. Naval Intelligence Officer, a rear admiral working in the Pentagon uh, on September 1st. He just retired a few weeks ago after 30-something years of service. So thank you, Paul, for your service also. Uh, the last time Paul spoke in public, as a civilian was in 1979, before he entered the Naval Academy in Annapolis, when Paul and I were in our Deer Park High School play, Arsenic and Old Lace, <laughs> is the last time Paul spoke on a stage in, as a civilian. He played the lead role, the leading man in Arsenic and Old Lace, and I played the dead body. <laughs> I did. I, I auditioned for the play, and I got the role of the dead body, which was in a coffin. Someone picks me up and drags me across stage, and that was my acting debut. <laughs> and he had all the lines. Please give an unbelievable rock star welcome to my dear friend and former <laughs> Navy intelligence officer, Mr. Paul Becker! Have at it, my friend. I see the smiles. <laughs> I sense the camaraderie, and I can feel the enthusiasm here. This is how I know I'm not in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I asked Craig how many people did this room sit, and he said he wasn't sure, but uh, for one presentation last year, it slept about 200. So <laughs> make sure, Paul, he told me, don't uh, put him to sleep. This is uh, my first uh, rock star. My wife, Kim, is in the back. Uh, some of you know her. She's been uh, to, oh, now she's up front. All right, she's been uh, to a few before. And uh, I served uh, 33 years in the Navy, and uh, so did she, uh, because that's a real team effort. So thank you for being with me along the way. Uh, this is how I looked last month. Uh, you are catching me one uh, 21 days, three weeks uh, exactly since uh, I retired. And uh, some folks have already asked me, what's the biggest difference since retirement? And number one is when the sun rises, I don't have to uh, any longer. Uh, number two is I'm wearing a lot fewer ties uh, over the last three weeks. And when I step outside, I don't have to put on a military cover and salute people. Uh, so I'm really enjoying my transition. Uh, but what I wanted to do was share with you all uh, some lessons that I learned in the military. They're military lessons, but they can apply to everyone and in every situation. Whether you're an entrepreneur that works alone or whether you're a corporate CEO that uh, is in charge 
of billions of dollars of budget and thousands of people. Uh, in my career, uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of history. And I've served with some of the greats of our time, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine leaders. Uh, many of the names you know, many you don't. Uh, the names include Petraeus and McChrystal and Dempsey and Flynn and Dunford and Mattis and Hayden and Stavridis and Rogers and Mullen. And uh, I keep a notebook. And uh, I like to observe folks. And I like to uh, take down notes and uh, be analytic about what is it that made them special? What was it about their personal performance? What was it about their organizational excellence uh, for the folks around them that made them great? And it boiled down to three core attributes. And those were teamwork, tone, and tenacity. And I'm going to speak a little bit more about uh, each one of them. So my observations with teamwork, tone, and tenacity uh, span uh, 33 years. And there are loads of lists of what constitutes great performance, or great management, or great leadership. Stephen Covey wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders. Uh, right up the road here, the former longtime vice president of Disney, Lee Cockrell, uh, wrote a book uh, called Making Magic, 10 Secret Strategies of the Disney Corporation. General Colin Powell has 13 Rules of Leadership. John Maxwell has a best-selling book called 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. These are all good books. I commend them to you. I've read them all. I have them earmarked in my office. Uh, but frankly, they're just a little bit too long for me to remember. Uh, I didn't want such a long list, and I didn't want a list of things to do. Uh, I was thinking, what are the core attributes of the greats that I've seen uh, that uh, focus on attitudes and frameworks and mindset instead of just something that you do every day? And teamwork, tone, tenacity fit that bill. Uh, they meet mission, they take care of people, and they uh, empower subordinates. These are all reinforcing things of things that uh, we've talked about already today. Uh, plus, they're short, they're actionable, and they're memorable. So in today's soundbite blurring, Facebook friending, Twitter tuned, LinkedIn looking world, <laughs> this is something that you could put your teeth into. And when the poo hits the fan, and it does in the real world uh, and uh, in the military world, uh, you can think of this framework uh, of ways to uh, attack the problems of today or the unpredictables of the future. Plus, people generally remember things in threes. Let me give you an example. This is the audience participation uh, portion uh, of the show. Uh, I'll give the first two. Please follow up with number three to emphasize the point that the human mind remembers things in groups of threes. Ready? One, two, three. A, B, B, lights, camera, Action. on your marks, get set, Go. past, present, Future. in the spirit of rock star and my wife's favorite group, earth, wind, and fire. fire. <laughs> One more, teamwork, tone, Tenacity. you all pass the exam. OK. So a little bit about uh, each one of them, uh, teamwork. There are a lot of elements of being a leader and uh, establishing a team. And a team could be one or two people, or it could be 1,000 or 20,000 people. There are a lot of things that a leader must do to establish good teamwork. And even if you're an individual entrepreneur, uh, you're going to be working with someone else uh, to market your product. That's what this weekend is about. They're part of your team as well. So a leader in order to have great teamwork, has to build relationships. And the goal is not the quantity of the relationships that you have. But when you have these relationships, what happens is people build trust with each other if you're dealing ethically and truthfully with them. And the byproduct of trust is loyalty. And that's the real goal for teamwork. And the greatest teams that I've ever seen had trust and loyalty with each other. And that's 
really something to fall back on in good times and bad. So even if you have a professional disagreement with a colleague, a partner, a client, uh, a provider, uh, as long as you're truthful and you have loyalty and respect for each other, you have something to fall back on, it's actually a pretty good lesson for today's society instead of devolving into incivility and public discourse, uh, there's, a, there's a good component that comes from that. The best organizations I ever saw were uh, teams that were built on trust uh, and loyalty where they communicated and they coordinated and they collaborated. Which leads to the next item, tone. Tone is just a positive attitude that creates a chain reaction of thoughts, events, and outcomes. It could be things that you say, the way you treat others with dignity and respect. It could be things that you write, the content of your emails. And that's not to be underestimated in today's society where whether it's Twitter or Facebook uh, or instant messaging or an actual email, never underestimate the power of an email. If someone slaves really hard and sends you something very thorough that they really want you to devour, digest, and you just send back, okay, uh, it's a bit demotivating uh, for that person. Do you think they're gonna pour their heart into it again? So consider taking an extra moment to say, thanks, I really value that input, a couple of thoughts on what you just shared. Uh, if you can build in that time, that's an example uh, of good tone. So tone can also just be things that you do without saying a word. How about these firemen? Uh, they weren't considering good tone at the time, but their actions uh, set a good tone. They were unruffled in a time of crisis. In the military, when you have that type of atmosphere where people want to come to work, and excel, and you know there's no panic, we call that a positive command climate. Uh, it may be called something else somewhere, but you get the gist of it all. And when you're clear and consistent and connecting with those in your immediate sphere and those in your outer spheres, well, that's an example of good tone. How about tenacity? I love this photo. Uh, you know, tenacity, uh, I, I like a citation from Thomas Edison. He said genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Uh, it's true, and I think that's complementary to everything that we just talked about in Craig's uh, last presentation. But tenacity is more than just hanging on. It's more than just endurance. It's hanging on and it's endurance with a certainty that you're going to achieve the goal at the end of that hanging on and that endurance. It's being able to prioritize tough problems ahead of your personal comfort or your personal ambition. Failure is just temporary if you're exercising tenacity. Uh, Craig mentioned this and, and one of uh, the role models of uh, the US Navy from years uh, ago was uh, a retired admiral, now deceased uh, Admiral Hyman Rickover. Uh, he's famous for a citation that failure uh, or success teaches nothing. Failure teaches everything. Uh, success teaches nothing. Failure teaches everything. Uh, and it's uh, a good compliment uh, here for tenacity. People who are tenacious, they just try harder. They have that indomitable spirit. And when you put together tenacity along with teamwork and tone, uh, you have the three elements of what makes the Navy great uh, and what makes naval personnel that focus on these things great. And in priority, they focus on the ship, their shipmates, and then themselves. So that's teamwork, tone, tenacity with a Navy meta met metaphor. Well, how about something uh, beyond the Navy? Uh, here's a hypothetical, and I want to talk about uh, teamwork, tone, tenacity. When things don't go exactly right, it could be in adversity. So after high school, as Craig mentioned, I went right into the Naval Academy, and uh, three weeks ago, I finally hung up my uniform.
But there are lessons I learned in the military that don't necessarily apply to military-only scenarios. Say, for example, you're a pretty healthy fella and you've just run the Honolulu Marathon in one of your best times. And you're the director of intelligence for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pentagon, the number two uniform military intelligence uh, job in the United States. And you're probably uh, facing another promotion and a, a better job down the road uh, because your passion is service for the country. Well, that's where I was uh, up until December of 2014, where when I went in for an MRI of my right knee, which was bothering me, uh, I was told, well, you have this thing called a plasma cytoma, uh, which is uh, a long word for a tumor. And upon further testing, I was also told, oh, you have multiple myeloma, uh, which I had never heard of, but I've since found out is uh, bone marrow cancer. And uh, after some testing, uh, this is all uh, occurring December 18th through 21st of 2014. So it made for a really sporty Christmas and New Year week uh, for Kim and I, I'll tell you. My tone was tested, uh, I'll tell you that. Our tone was tested. Uh, so uh, after some uh, exhaustive tests and uh, discussion with our doctors, uh, we embarked on the following course of action after I asked, can you tell me where else the cancer is? And at this point I was in stage, uh, stage three of stage four with a high risk cytogenic profile. Uh, which in short is not uh, the indicators of a favorable outcome. Uh, step one was to save your right leg, which they couldn't promise because my right femur was almost gone. And then after recovery from that would be chemo and or radiation therapy to save my life. Uh, I accepted this all. I passed the shock and uh, denial and bargaining phase uh, of crisis. And uh, you do this in the military because you're used to this type of profession of arms where people get hurt and the mission must be achieved. So we started moving forward. And I found out along the way, and this is after having uh, much of my right femur removed, and I have the ultimate contraption now that holds it together that the people at TSA just love. Every time I come through, they wave the wand and they call over their friends and they say, look at this. I've never seen this before. <laughs> so in the course of cancer treatment, you find out that teamwork, tone, tenacity comes in pretty handy. In fact, cancer treatment is not so much about medicine. Uh, to some degree, it's all about teamwork, tone, tenacity, or maybe the three Fs uh, that Jade talked about. Uh, which is uh, family and faith and fitness along the way. Uh, and that gets a testing when I had uh, tubes put into my aorta like uh, Natasha, and she was a great comfort and advisor to me along the way. Uh, the eyebrows fell out too, as did all the other body hair further into uh, the treatment. And that was last August. That was 13 months uh, ago. Okay, uh, And then on the comeback trail after teaming with the doctors, right, teamwork, building that trust and loyalty relationship with those who would save me, the tone of making sure I defined what the experience would mean to me instead of what the experience would define my life. And to me, the experience would mean I'm going to come out of this better and improved and focus on more wise of things I want to do when I get better, and here I am. Uh, and then there's the tenacity, uh, which uh, an author nowadays named Angela Duckworth just uh, wrote a book called Grit. She talks about the power of perseverance. And this is 10 months ago, a uh, little thinner, a lot balder. Uh, and I include this here. This is my Naval Academy College roommate who comes from right up the road in Hawthorne, California, went to losing your high school. So Craig knows what makes me happy. He brought me a Mr. Bill Dahl of Saturday Night Live claymation skits uh, fame from the 70s, as well as a mad uh, magazine uh, compilation to, to make me better. So you put it all together, and teamwork, tone, tenacity, or military lessons I learned uh, along the way. Uh, I certainly intend to apply them in all I do. I think you can apply them to what you do. And it doesn't matter if you're in a business suit or a flight suit or a hospital gown, 
uh, they are applicable. Now, the two words you've been waiting to hear. In conclusion. <laughs> Te teamwork, tone, and tenacity are the triple crown of leadership attributes. Okay? They don't just cover the problems of today, but they can help you with the unpredictables of tomorrow. This picture, as an aside, Kim took just uh, a few months ago when we went to Pearl Harbor for the 74th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. And uh, in the background, you can see the battleship Missouri. And we were stationed there twice uh, in Hawaii along the way. So that's a happy place for me. That was one of my business goals, that I wanted to get back to those military happy places. Uh, but I have other uh, larger-than-life goals that I'll work with Craig with uh, on the future uh, as well. So teamwork, tone, tenacity, if you use it with folks in your immediate vicinity, trust me, they will be a magnet that will draw people to you. If you're by yourself and you just want to put them somewhere, think of them as a star to steer by. Us sailors love navigational references uh, <laughs> like that. Uh, and previews and coming attractions for what we'll talk about the rest of this week, as I understand it, it's also become my brand. Uh, and uh, my website, my LLC address, and my pending trademark, uh, all involve, amazingly enough, teamwork, tone, and tenacity. So they are relevant, they are respectable, they are rememberable. Anyone can apply them in a small group, in a large group. And as I end my presentation, I hope that you'll begin to use them in your businesses and in your personal lives, uh, they are teamwork, tone, tenacity. Thank you. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Let's hear it for Paul Becker. Stay up here. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, really, thank you. <laughs> so I, I want to I keep Paul up here for a couple of more minutes. Uh, if anyone has any questions they would like to ask, but I, I just want to share something. Just go to the mic if you have a question. But I want to share something of who uh, Mr. Becker is instead of Rear Admiral, Bull, er, Admiral, <laughs> Rear Admiral Becker. Uh, Mr. Becker, uh, in uh, two, no, let me see, hold on. It was, how many years ago did... Uh, so in April, like three years ago, I think it was three years ago, uh, I called Paul up uh, at the Pentagon. It's, I, I got the uh, number for the bat phone at the at the Pentagon, and I called Paul up and I said, uh, "Hey, listen, I am just new at this school, this uh, school that we just started going to, and uh, we go on this East Coast trip, and it's like 250 kids and a bunch of chaperones. We go to the East Coast and we go to like Boston and Philadelphia and New York." in Washington, D.C., and we go to all these places. And I said, they would like to go to the Capitol. And I said, do you have any connections at the Capitol? And he said, well, I do, but you know, I have really good connections at the Pentagon. <laughs> and and I, he said, would you like to come to the Pentagon with your group? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I said to Paul, all right, we have 250 kids and a bunch of chaperones can we make this happen? And there was this whole logistic thing. You know, there's the Pentagon tours. They give tours at the Pentagon for like groups of 20 or something like 20 people. And, um, and, and they don't go everywhere. In the, there's a certain tour that they give the regular people that don't know Paul Becker. So uh, I, I just asked for that. Just, can we just do something and give the kids a tour and we get to the Pentagon? This is the epitome of Paul Becker. Not only did he do that, made me look good in front of my school. We get to the Pentagon, and I find out that before we go in, we've, we've organized how this is gonna work, uh, growing into, they extended, it wasn't groups, it was groups of 20, but we had, it was so organized, we had to go through metal machines now and all that stuff, but it was so organized. And we get in there, and I find out that there are how many stations about? Was it 16 or something? Yeah, we had 16. 16 stations that are planted all throughout the Pentagon with a high-level officer from each of the branches of the military 
explaining the area that we are in of the Pentagon. So the first group of 20 would go to this high-ranking official, and he would explain what's going on here. That would, group would go to the uh, number two. They had assistants, or whatever they were called, uh, walking us around. Okay, now you go here, now you go here, and it was this well-oiled machine. And I did not know, I think it was the day before, you guys rehearsed this. We they love to rehearse in the military. <laughs> I we rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. <laughs> they rehearsed this whole thing in the Pentagon for us little people from Oaks Christian School. And it was by far, to this day, talked about in my school as the greatest experience. We went to, is it the E-ring? Mm -hmm. Not many people get to go to the E-ring. Not on the tour. Not on the tour. <laughs> we were... I, right outside the offices of the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. The E-ring is the outer ring with all the windows, and that's where all the high-ranking people are, and we go to the windows, and uh, we go to those rooms, and we got into all that area. Who was the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at that time? General Martin Dempsey Who at the time. Two of the groups actually met. Yes. He was there, he, he and he shook their hands. <laughs> yeah. These kids are like... <laughs> It was the most incredible thing, and Paul was one of the uh, stations there, and he put this all together. So once again, in front of all these people, the greatest Thank experience you. of our lives. Yeah, a couple of thoughts on that. Yeah. First, uh, the uh, students were easier to control than the chaperones, actually, because <laughs> Jade was there as well, you know, so I had to, you know, shepherd uh, Jade and Craig around. But uh, also, folks, it's your military. It's our military. Yeah. Okay? So in, in Southern California, there's not that great an opportunity unless you get down to way SoCal, San Diego. Kim and I own a home in Coronado. We'll eventually get back there. Yeah! Uh, you know, but until then, we live in Alexandria, Virginia, which is a suburb of, of Washington, D.C. But there's not much exposure here in SoCal to the military. So uh, it's our military. I wanted these students to see... Uh, their military and what we do in at least one part of it in the Pentagon. So it, I'm glad that worked out. Everyone won. Everyone won. It was the most incredible thing. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, after the tour is over, Paul invites me to his office and he's got like, I don't know, six people. I, I think you had like six assistants or whatever they're called. These people that do whatever he says to do, which is kind of cool. I want one <laughs> and you had like six. Uh, so I walk into his office and, uh, it's, and, and literally, it's exactly what you think. There's like different phones for different reasons. <laughs> there are things on the desk that say classified and top secret. And I said to Paul, hey, Paul, whoa, can I just read that one that says top secret? He goes, yeah, sure, try it. <laughs> See what happens to you in about five seconds. <laughs> and, uh, I'm I thinking if I reach for that. <laughs> Craig almost hit the button that launched a Tomahawk land attack cruise missile, but uh, I tackled him in the nick of time. Don't touch that. Don't touch that dial. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and what he gave me in his office will, uh, was the most in incredible thing. He, has this, he had this table with a glass top on it, and underneath the glass top on top of the table where you can visually see are those type of things. They're ch called challenge coins, correct? Mm -hmm that military officials and high-ranking people exchange with each other. So we had all these challenge coins, and, and they're very, you don't just give them out to anybody, anyone. And Paul gave me one of those challenge coins in his office, and it was like the coolest thing that I've ever gotten. And then you gave one to Tyler, and then you gave one to Ryan, and you've given one to Hayden, too. So they are, they, they're displayed in their rooms, very, very, I, 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 I've never had a challenge coin before, and they're kind of, just explain what the challenge coin is just really fast. Yeah, uh, in the military, you can't give everyone a medal all the time, uh, but if you really appreciate the good work they're doing, when you, when you give them a handshake, you just slide in a piece of your appreciation. So it's a, it's a brass, you personalize it. Uh, I was the J2, or in joint terminology, the director of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and that's the logo. I was a two-star admiral at the time. Purple is the color <coughs> of jointness, right? The Navy's blue, the Marines kind of, ar um, Army's oh. green, Marines red. You put them all together, you kind of get purple. Uh, gold is the color of excellence. Uh, so I, I tried to personalize it that way, and that was my personal challenge coin. 
That's, and so everyone has a personal challenge coin. Not everyone. Not, I mean, just uh, the more senior people. you get, uh, you typically carry them with you uh, in case you want to thank someone for whenever they've displayed teamwork and tone and tenacity, uh, whether in the <laughs> short term or in the long term. With so you. what you're saying is that I must have exuded teamwork, tone, and tenacity. You are the exemplar uh, <laughs> of teamwork, tone, and tenacity in the 40 years that I've known you. There you go, my dear. Oh, you are so, I just love this place. Um, and then when Paul was diagnosed with this thing, uh, you know, it's amazing to me. If you don't, Paul is probably one of the healthiest people I know on this planet. He works out every single day. Him and I used to run cross country and track together. He used to come to my house at like 8.40, no, probably 7 in the morning. And, and we would run three or four miles through Belmont State Park. And, uh, and, and he made me do it. He was my accountability partner. And then it's all just gone downhill after that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but we ran like almost every day for summers, during the summers and everything. And he just kept, kept it going. The epitome of health, epitome of health. And he wakes up one day in December 2014 and everything changed. But that, was, that picture was how long ago? 13 months? Was that was in June. June uh, the, the of last year. The picture with my Hawthorne California right. roommate, was that picture was last October. That was 11 months ago. Now. 11 months ago, and look at him now. Positive, positive thinking and power. One more time for Mr. Paul Becker! Oh, we'll, we'll take a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot one thing. Let's take a couple of questions. There's a couple of people out there, and, and I'm sorry about that. Roger. Hi, Paul. Uh, oh, Roger. Be grateful to be here. Um, uh, I'm a Coast Guard brat. Uh, my father, a uh, U.S. retired Coast Guard, uh, had passed away. And I am just so grateful to be a U.S. citizen. I'm grateful for the freedoms that we have here in this country that no other country in the world has. And that's because of the military. And I applaud you and everyone in our military um, that keeps our country safe each and every day, especially in this day and age. And I don't think, I think a lot of Americans take for granted the freedoms that we have. And when I see, um, you know, when you watch sporting events or, or, or even concerts, at a Journey concert, uh, Neil Sean played the U.S., the national anthem. Mm. It's more and more nowadays uh, that we value the importance of our military. And I want to commend you. This is more of a, um, a just. It ain't a question, basically. No, <laughs> yeah, it is. But I do have a, a quick, uh, oh. th quick thing. This is, you know, we're, we're, we're in a change of administration now. So my question to you, especially with what's everything's going on, how do you see forecast going into 2017 as we, <laughs> You know, <laughs> do, you, do you have any do you have any insights on on what that's going to look like? Don't open this can well, of worms. I'll Be just, careful. I'll just I'll just start this way. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't let Kim answer it. I'm kidding. Listen, uh, I'm but, joking, I'm well, joking. just some background. I, I think by most national polling, uh, the U.S. military is one of the most respected institutions in the United States. So, uh, they, so be assured, no matter what administration comes to power, uh, the military uh, will salute the commander in chief, no matter who sh he or she is, and that's why we have such a reputation, okay? We uh, observe the Constitution, we support and defend well and faithfully, discharge the duties. <laughs> upon which there you go. Right. Very grateful, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome, Dave. Wow, Rear Admiral Becker. Yes. I'm Honored, I've never met a Rear Admiral before. Now my question is, uh, it's, it's confusing to me when I hear on television how you have these, these Brigadier Generals and, and Admirals disagree so vehemently on what we should do or what's the course. What direction or what percentage of, of the Pentagon would you say leans more toward the conservative or leads more toward the, con uh, uh, the progressive side? I mean, without getting political, yeah. just curious. Uh, while we're in uniform, uh, we're 100% independent. Uh, once we're out of uniform, 
Uh, <laughs> we've worked for the right to represent ourselves whichever way uh, we care to. And, and Good answer. <laughs> <coughs> But, uh, but, uh, but, but I think it's well, a true answer. In, in uniform, you in are... In uniform, we are apolitical and 100% uh, independent, neither Republican nor conservative. Great. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Republican is conservative. Uh, neither Republican nor Democrat. There you go. <laughs> uh, Jeff. Admiral Jeffrey Wolf, uh, Hi, Jeff. host of Adventure CEO Leadership Insights Radio. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your service. Uh, my father served in the Navy as part of the island hopping campaign during World War II. Ooh, first that was sporty. <laughs> first, first wave of Guadalcanal. Wow. Yeah, so I have a deep appreciation for the Navy through listening to his experience. Had a, you mentioned rehearsals and how much the military loves to rehearse. Could you talk briefly about how rehearsals impact teamwork tone and tenacity? Yeah, uh, rehearsals or training uh, in an academic setting, it may be considered war games, right, at a, at a place like a, uh, uh, a service war college. Like before World War II at the Naval War College, the U.S. Navy planned out a whole Pacific Island hopping campaign that your father uh, participated in. So uh, out in the field, if you're, a, uh, if you're an airborne ranger, you're going to practice night jumps with folks in case you need to be inserted to rescue some hostages somewhere. So uh, how does that uh, come into the three T's? It builds teamwork. Through training or rehearsal, you build up that trust and loyalty. Uh, when the poo hits the fan in training, it tests your tone. And uh, are you able to respond to it better when it happens in real life? Because nothing earns you the respect more than when you're cool under pressure when everyone else is, is panicking, like Kevin Bacon at the end of Animal House, you know. <laughs> all is well, all is well, right, you know. Uh, and then tenacity is if you get it wrong in rehearsal, right, failure teaches everything. Success teaches nothing. If you get it wrong in rehearsal, you practice on getting it right in actuality. So that's how T3 applies to rehearsals or training. Love that. Hey, Master oh. Sergeant, how are you? Here's a uh, military vet herself. Uh, L. Donna Lewis Fernandez, retired Air Force. And uh, I salute you, sir. And you, ma'am. And I, I really resonate. Uh, you're speaking my language. I was in 23 years in the Air Force, and I love teamwork. I, tenacity is something I live by. I like what you said about tone. What I, uh, how can we get that to our civilian counterparts? Because I think our country needs to have more of a teamwork mentality, mm. and I see that lacking. How can, we, how can we get that to them to where they understand it's not just a military thing like you're saying? Yeah, it's uh, leadership by example. Uh, y there's no panacea, right? There's no pill that you could put in the water and everyone drinks it and they're on board. So we're, we're all in charge of ourselves and uh, you hope there's some cascading effect to those around you. So uh, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. It's leadership by example. Make sure you never have a say-do mismatch. If you say your teamwork tone tenacity, you better do it. Because one thing I found out in my 30 plus years of service, soldiers, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, they will find out a phony in a heartbeat. Mm. You know, so if you have a say do mismatch, you're over. Uh, so work it one small drop at a time and hope that concentric circle uh, gets out there. Uh, or speak about it to larger groups like this. And this is uh, short, it's actionable, uh, it's, uh, it's achievable uh, as a business goal for anyone around here. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Gloria. Okay, thank you so much for your service to our country. I have a question about something I saw in 60 Minutes about a tour of the, I think it's the USS Kentucky, uh, where in there, we're shown that we have all these uh, nuclear weapons and, and we were actually taken on a tour of the South, and I'd like to know, is that teamwork with the media you're doing when you're showing what all we have for our national defense? Uh, in part, uh, yes, it is teamwork with the public. The media is just the medium that we, uh, media, medium, that we transmit it through. Back to the uh, OC school visit to the Pentagon. It's your military, it's our military. I'm a big believer if you, if you drop the letter Y, from the word your, 
It becomes a very different word, right? Our. Mm. So it's our military, so it's the, mil it's the Navy's way in this case of showing the public how we're defending this nation. In this case, uh, that's part of our nuclear deterrence, submarine launch ballistic missiles uh, from, a, uh, from a, a platform like Kentucky. So it's uh, teamwork uh, to the public. Uh, and it also has a deterrent message to remind those that would do us harm uh, that we can really <laughs> use these weapons if we had to. <laughs> okay. I like that. So there's a lot of strategic communications involved there, both internal to America and external. And hey. uh, oh, we'll just do two more and one more. So three more and that's it. Jason. Uh, hey, Jason. I have two. One comment, one question, yep. real quick. I served aboard the USS Harry W. Hill from 93 to 97, and I was the staff radio man uh, for our command center. And uh, during that time, I had a gentleman that I served with who was my chief at the time. And uh, an episode happened on our ship. It was just he and I in our, in our space, and he got choked on something, and I had to do the Heimlich maneuver on him and free him of a piece of chicken that was in his throat. Uh, years later, he uh, died in the Pentagon when the plane hit the Pentagon mm. during 9-11. Mm. The trip out to the Pentagon that you allowed us to uh, go on afforded me the opportunity to stand in the memorial garden and lead a devotion and a prayer on behalf of that chief. So I thank you for that opportunity. I've never been able to tell you that, so wow, I thank you. Wow, that's awesome. Um, question is, something I ask my guests on my podcast, is out of your core four, out of your faith, your fitness, your family, and your finances, which one of those provides you with the most power? Where do you harness the most power in those four to continue to strive for excellence and be effective in your influence? Uh, I'm going to avoid picking just one. Okay. On, on any Most people do. On any day, Jade, uh, it may be uh, in a different sequence. Uh, had I not been fit prior to my diagnosis, I'm not sure the outcome would have been the same. Mm. Uh, had I not been a person of faith, I doubt the outcome would have been the same. Mm. If I did not have a loving wife uh, that was with me every step of the way, I doubt the outcome would have been the same. Yeah. Uh, so. Just like teamwork, tone, tenacity, I, sometimes I get asked, which is number one, two, and three? Put them in sequence for me. Uh, and it, it's a circle. And you may just hit it at some point in the circle, and at that moment, tone is more mm -hmm. important than the other. Or at some point of my life, faith was more important than fitness, mm -hmm. uh, but vice versa. So that's a long way to say I, I don't have an answer. Uh, Would you say that, that all three are effective in harnessing giving you power to continue to strive for influence? A absolutely. Uh, right. they're, well, an in they're an indivisible triad, right? Faith, family, fitness, teamwork, tone, tenacity. Uh, they're a triangle. If you lose one leg of that triangle, <laughs> the other two sides collapse mm. on themselves. Then you don't have a, so they need to all three be here. Hey Amen. thank you. Okay. Awesome. Hi, sir. My name is Orion. I'm very honored to be talking to you. Um, I'm Israeli. I served in the Israeli Army um, Intelligence. I have deep yeah. respect for uh, both our armies um, and just super grateful again to uh, talk to you. And my question is, what do you do to set your mind for success, to set the tone? Do you have rituals? Um, do you do anything? Uh, to set your tone. Yeah, uh, I do. Thanks, Orion. Uh, we probably have some of the same friends, you know, from the <laughs> Israeli Defense Forces. Catch you on a break and uh, you talk about it. Uh, I envision an end state, so it's a visual for me of what I want to achieve, right? Remember that hand on the rock with tenacity? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not my end state. My end state's when I climb on top of that rock and I'm doing something else. So I start there and I work my way backwards. And to get there, uh, I realize I may need to team with some different folks that I'm not currently teamed with. So that helps establish courses of action for me. Uh, regarding tone, I'll just need to check myself, remembering things I need to say, things I need to do, 
or a culture around me that I need to create in order to achieve it. And then tenacity is back to the failure is temporary and, and I won't accept it before getting there. So maybe like some athletes, you envision the great golf shot and, and then you go about working on your grip and your stance and your swing and your timing. Uh, I envision whatever it is, the mission I want to achieve and then I work it backwards with a framework of teamwork, tone, tenacity, because I can only remember three things. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and there's good alliteration there to help me out. So thank you, good question. Good Badal job. Rabah. Last but not least, Mr. Walt Gressel. Hi, Walt. Hi, uh, thanks for coming and sharing uh, with us. Uh, for 37 years, I worked in the aerospace industry uh, as you were my customer. So in this room full of entrepreneurs who deal with customers, uh, could you give three tips on customer service mistakes or attitudes that your uh, customers, or you actually you were our customer, so uh, what mistakes in dealing with you as a customer did your suppliers, the defense industry, make? Or what opportunities for improvement did they have? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I've had consumers as well. My product was intelligent. My goal was to sit at a table with a bunch of war fighters or policy makers and say, here's what just happened, here's what I think it means, here's what I recommend we do. All right? that, that's the role of an intelligence officer. Intelligence is information that's evaluated and, and you add some perspective to it. So as I transition to become a civilian, uh, I can still provide intelligence, it may be business intelligence instead of national security uh, intelligence uh, as well. So uh, I never bought into the philosophy that the customer is always right. Uh, I, I, I'm not a businessman, you know, uh, yet. Yet. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I don't have the maxim, uh, you know, down pat, but uh, it's not to say that they're never right, but I'm always interested in a dialogue w in the exchange of information to understand someone's goals, their needs, and make sure that the product matches uh, and that you get uh, some coherence uh, between the two. Uh, that's number one. The, the second thing is that uh, I think producers in the corporate sector typically had a bias towards action. That is, they wanted a product. They make money by producing a product, employing people, delivering some either a hardware or a service. And it may not be what the customer needed. And sometimes in the name of business, the producer just shoveled the product uh, at uh, us, in this case, the consumer, uh, and uh, it was a bias towards action, not in the most positive way. Mm. Uh, and then uh, I'll leave it at two. I can't think of a That's third. That's a good one. one. Plus, you. you know, the timer says, you know, we're, you know, out. <laughs> we are. Uh, you know. We're, we're so <laughs> over, but it's so <laughs> worth it. All right, one more. Uh, th I, once again, I, I just, uh, I love where you're going now. Paul is, uh, seriously, he's become a civilian, and in three short weeks, He's been building the foundation, but uh, he's becoming an entrepreneur really, really fast. He's uh, going on the speaking circuit. This is literally his first speaking gig, and he's, <laughs> yeah. And uh, just signed with a pretty big speaker bureau and uh, getting him out there, and uh, they want his message. So once again, you have something in your past. You have something that is interesting, and people want to hear your message. And that's, that's why he's, he's taking his ex experience. He's taking his experience, and now he's able to give back and share to the world. And you can just tell by the response. People just want to hear stuff like this. So wish him great luck in the future because he's got a great message to share, and we just want him to be on stages all across the world. And I'm blessed to have you on my stage first. Thank you. Mr. Paul Becker, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, Sorry. Ryan, so Oh, no, we're good. Here you go here. I'm going to... We're going to take a, let me see, what time is it? It is 11.15. Let's just do 15 minutes. Just uh, go to the restroom, do what you have to do, go get some water. 15 minutes, back in the room at 11.30, and the vendors get ready uh, in the next session. So 11.30, we are back talking about, uh, what are we talking about? Wait, where's my thing? Hold on.
Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> oh, target markets and your unique yeah. selling hey, proposition. Very important Marine in marketing. 15 minutes. Here we go. All right. All right. My brother's the Marine. I'm the black sheep.